So, like, if I have to put a term to it, is that sort of a crux of the minimalist philosophy as such? Because you write a lot about it. You obviously your podcast right. is about it, um, and on other social media platforms as well, you share a lot about uh, the min- minimalism philosophy. Often, people who aren't, let's say, well aware with it, even even me for that matter, who who haven't delved into it as much as you have, have a sort of a general approach from the outside that okay, it's abstention from so many things, and is is there even uh is there even a point of living or those sorts of some of some of them even move towards nihilist perceptions of uh, when they think about uh, minimalism in that sense. Do you have a particular definition of minimalism and how you sort of define it? Okay. See, uh, growing up, I could have never imagined myself telling my life uh, story as a minimalist because uh, at that time, I didn't even know that living with less intentionally, these terms exist. So, (laughs) yes. So, uh, even the existence of minimalism wasn't something that I knew Hmm. back then. But uh, for me, minimalism is not only about your stuff and, you know, renouncing everything overnight and just uh, move away to live in a caravan. It's not just that. It's about choosing everything intentionally, whatever is entering your life, whatever Maybe it may be the thing, it may be work, it may be people. So whenever, when you choose intentionally, you are a minimalist. (laughs) But you have to be very intentional about uh, everything you are allowing in your life, be it food as well. Yes. So is that um, liberating in some sense? Because... I mean, I don't think I've gone to the extent as much as you have, but I sort of have done it with a few things. Like, um, you you touched about food. So, I think I have a very minimalist approach to food in that sense because I have a... I was just speaking to Ankita Shivastava, who is a content creator and who also talks a lot about nutrition and well-being for those and those kinds of things. So, I told her that I have a very regimented diet in that sense and I don't move away from that. And that takes into account my nutritional needs that I have to meet. But also... Something I mentioned to her was that I was really inspired from Gandhi, not only for several other reasons, but also if you look at it in terms of not thinking about the things you have to do almost, like a stoic approach to it. So it's it's almost like, okay, so I have to eat. There's just food that I have that is there. I don't have to let my mind wander into thinking that, oh, what do I feel like eating today? Uh, do you, uh, does it make sense in terms of where I'm coming from? <laughs> uh, yes, somewhat. Yes, because, <laughs> yes, the more simple our food is, the more, you know, uh, the, the less it takes, our, the less effort it takes mm. in terms of, you know, our focus or uh, the stress it the stress cooking comes with. Mm. Because, yes, I totally believe... Uh, Food should be, you know, it involves simple ingredients. It shouldn't be like uh, always uh, scrumptious meal and, you know, you know full-fledged <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meal. So it should be as simple as it. Uh, and, uh, yes, when it comes to food, it sh- what there's one interesting line from my father what I relate with when I started following minimalism. He always used to say that uh, there shouldn't be anything in your life in terms of food that you uh, can't live with because we we you know we all have our uh, unique uh, what i must say unique uh, limitations mm-hmm. or that this is something i can't just uh, live with i need this or as I'll in, in, our, in my <laughs> daily diet, or otherwise yeah. I'll don't I don't call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> so this this uh, this is of course an addiction. Hmm. Yes. So uh, there shouldn't be anything what we can't live with or what we can't uh, uh, say that our diet is not complete without that. So uh, this sentence from him uh, resonates with me a lot when I when I talk about minimalist diet. And yes. So something, I was listening to an interview of yours um, where you spoke a lot about this aspect of when you started off with your journey of minimalism, there were so many, it often came to your mind that there were 
things that you associated as needs but later on when you started exploring this whole path of minimalism that you actually found out that those were wa- that those were wants so like can you sort of untangle this process of like just your journey through minimalism and like your experiences and then possibly we can get into this whole phenomena of uh, what we conceive to be needs in the modern day and and how that may not be true right 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 so uh, while i was in my 20s shopping was my need <laughs> being a woman i can certainly touch that point shopping was my need but uh, now it isn't i only shop when it's needed because it's you know it's not a need anymore it's a want we want to you know we want to do we want to fulfill whenever a sale comes whenever we have salary in account coming in so there was a time when i was living i was actually earning to spend <laughs> so <laughs> yeah even before the salary was coming in i was making a list of how to spend it oh my god it was a transition from there to here now where i am not making that list and even i am not thinking about what to buy next mm. so yes there it is a transition it is it is a slow transition which happened over the years over 3 to 4 years of time and it Yes uh, so that was my journey from a shopaholic girl in my 20s to now a minimalist woman <laughs> So um do you do you think you're still um going ahead with that journey in some ways in subtracting things from your life even right now that you feel that um are things that you could possibly do without and uh, aren't let's say adding value to your life is is that the particular uh, is that the particular word here like adding value or something that you find meaningful right 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 so if we want to summarize minimalism in two words yes it's all about subtraction and addition but more than subtraction it's more about more inclined to addition because yes once we are done with subtraction part which is uh, which is a one time task or i must say t- one time you can you can do it in you know one time uh, it's more about adding new things because there's always an opportunity to add more things more mm. people more work to your uh, under your plate but but when you are intentional about what to add and uh, how much to add how much to add it's it's yes Uh, minimalism gets only complete meaning when you are adding uh, more intentionally so why do you think that i touched about this little earlier right like with this aspect of people who from the outside who may not understand the philosophy as as well may have these uh, preconceived notions of uh, what minimalism is and they may start associating it with some sort of nihilism or those sorts of things like what can you speak of that like just the misconceptions that surround uh, the whole phenomena of uh, minimalism yes there are many there are many because being a punjabi <laughs> i can totally say that there are many among uh, our tribe because uh, punjabis you punjabis are some uh, are people who like to you know show off like to splurge on things <laughs> like to spend a lot on weddings a lot on self grooming uh, and yes uh, following the uh, fashion trend but uh, yes so once i I I am telling you an incident. Uh my brother-in-law was wearing a t-shirt with minimalism written on it. <laughs> so I was just curious. I asked him, uh Bea, are you re- are you following minimalist lifestyle because yes you are wearing a t-shirt. So he said no, I just can't deprive myself. How can I? <laughs> oh my god. So I just got to know that yes there are lots of miscep- misconceptions around it. There are lots of myths around it at least uh in the people around me. Hmm. so that uh, that is the first misconception that it is deprivation it is not it is not deprivation certainly because see it must be deprivation for our ancestors because then the resources were limited there were a lack of resources for them it must be deprivation but mm. for at least for our generation for the generations coming forward it is not certainly deprivation it is uh, you know intentionally cutting down or downsizing your uh, stuff or your your digital life yeah yeah so uh, it's it's that it's not certainly deprivation i must say it's a privilege <laughs> <laughs> because see someone who is already struggling with his uh, you know income sources can't just think about what is minimalism mm. and how can i follow that <laughs> e- 
<laughs> only when I'm privileged to think about yeah. the, uh, that sector, that area, only then I can explore minimalism. So minimalism is for the privileged people, not for <laughs> not yeah. the deprivation at all. So do you think it's... <laughs> In a sense that people from the outside may think it's depriving oneself from, let's say, these uh, material things that are there in the world. But do you think in some sense it's liberating or it's actually freeing you? Because the thing is, in the world we live in, everyone's almost chasing, as you said, even with your uh, background, when you were in your 20s, you were uh, always thinking about, let's say, what material things you could add to your life and those sorts of things. But do you feel that once you've sort of framed your mindset in the things that you value and then those are the things you're going to work towards then it's, it's almost liberating that you don't want to then uh, go into that materialistic lifestyle in some sense yes <laughs> yes certainly certainly I can really talk about that uh, because even when I was a mother to a single kid yeah I didn't really have the time to attend to his needs because I myself was running day and night. I I uh, move out of the home early in the morning and just, just uh, get back uh, almost at 8 in the night when I am not, I wasn't capable of uh, attending to him physically and mentally both. So it's quite liberating in that sense. Even if someone doesn't have kids, doesn't have a, f- you know, a family to attend, family to uh, look after. Even for self, it is so much liberating when you don't have that, you know, pressure to, uh, pressure to, uh, to be par with the society mm. uh, society cult- I mean it's not I must not say culture uh, with the societal uh, beliefs where, where yes yeah. where people relate abundance to the number of things you have num- abund- they have, they really uh, yeah. equate abundance with number of stuff number of things anyone own so even I had this notion of yes abundance is how much money I have in my bank account but now it's so liberating that I don't actually calculate how much money I'm having and even if it's you know uh, satisfying my wants because I don't see I am not having unnecessary wants that society has put me in now I have my needs I have my passion where I want to yes I want to travel I want to uh, go over the places but that's not because social media has put me Mm. put (laughs) inside me you know so I am uh, I'm already living a life where I need less vacation because I'm I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush of, you know, uh, running day and night where uh, working five hours, hustling five hours, uh, sorry, hustling five days in a week and then waiting for th- those two days, Saturdays and Sundays for me to go out and just, uh, uh, you know, looking for a getaway. So I am uh, in the crush term, I I am on a uh, holycation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, always, I am not now hustling five mm. days a week to wait for this two days. 